Welcome. This is uh, another chapter in, in art, connecting art to our lives with Humanity 101. As an introduction, art has been described as humankind's most enduring achievement. From the time of early cave dwelling to contemporary society, art has served as a vehicle for translating our insights into understanding ourselves and others. The creation of art may have different aims. For example, to make something beautiful, to be broadly expressive and emotional without connection to beauty, for personal reasons, to illustrate concepts and beliefs of great importance to its creators, to show ways in which a group is unified, or to make a social or political statement. These disparate aims have one thing in common. They each seek in some way to connect art to our lives. Aesthetics. Aesthetics is the study of principles and appreciation of beauty is linked to our thinking about and connections to art. During the 18th century in Europe, philosophers and other thinkers began to question the interrelationship of art, beauty, and pleasure. One art movement in the 19th century is Romanticism. It celebrated spontaneity, emotion, the individual, and the sublime intellectual and imaginative sensations that defy measurement or explanation. The Romantic painter Delacroix spent his lifetime seeking to express the extremes of human emotion and experience in his work based on history, literature, current events, and his own travels. With passages of brilliant color applied in thick, vigorous brushstrokes, Delacroix depicted beauty, violence, tragedy, and ecstasy with equal passion in waves of movement swiftly passing across his canvas. This quality can be seen in the death of Serendopolis, where the shadowed figure of the Assyrian king surveys the scene of carnage taking place before him with dispassion. Although historical accounts indicate that Serendopolis did have all of his possessions destroyed, including his concubines and horses, rather than surrender them to his enemies, Delacroix largely relied on his own imagination for his frenzied interpretation and embellishment of the scene. John Dewey, an American philosopher, psychologist, and educational reformer, in 1934 wrote Art and Experience. He described the aesthetic experience in ways that somewhat reflect the process Delacroix brought to his painting. Dewey stated, however, that although it begins with the art object, the experience of art extends far beyond that one element to produce an ongoing exchange between artist, viewer, and culture at large that culminates in an experience that is a manifestation, a record and celebration of the life of a civilization. For example, Walking around and through a grand structure such as Reims Cathedral in France, with its high Gothic facade, lavish sculptural decoration, extreme verticality, and expansive windows, is breathtakingly impressive because object, building, and experience have coalesced. Miami-based artist Jonah Kerwinski began his career making graffiti art and street murals and considers any surface a ground for art. In 2007, he covered a Lamborghini car with an intertwined network of organic shapes and geometric lines. This work of art can be described as an example of disinterested contemplation. You look at the Lamborghini and contemplate the beauty and elegance of the car and its design. In this way, the car's aesthetic appeal stems from admiration of the object and the delight it gives. It is a judgment of taste. Conversely, it could be described as an aesthetic experience. Looking at Lamborghini produces a response of pleasure, perhaps at its beauty, its place in history, or fine motor cars, or the thought of owning and driving such a prestigious and fast vehicle. In this case, appreciation of beauty is both a broadly intellectual as well as an individual emotional response. 
expression, philosophical, political, religious, and personal. Art has important functions in facilitating various types of human expression. Both creating and viewing art can provide us means of stating or affirming our personal and collective feelings, thoughts, ideas, and attitudes. Often we learn values and philosophical ideas and themes through artistic means. Among the many philosophy-based art movements of the late 19th century was the French group who called themselves La Nabis, or the Prophets. Their task as artists, they believed, was to revive ideals of painting, to prophesy modern modes, and to affirm spiritual goals by envisioning nature's roles in life and creating a new symbolism. Among the movement's leaders was Denis, who often depicted landscape settings imbued with biblical or mythical themes. His paintings are abstracted statements about his philosophies of faith and the need for honesty in art. With willowy figural forms that were lyrically flattened in space, he asserted the two-dimensionality of the picture plane, seeking to avoid the delusions of depth and emphasizing the surface of the work and the beauty of color. Political statements are often wed to philosophical principles in ways that they are given artistic expression. Such was the case with the grand American landscape paintings of the immigrants crossing the plains by Bierstadt. This painting was associated with the 19th century philosophy of manifest destiny, which promoted the idea that the assimilation of land and the use of natural resources of the western parts of the United States were God-given rights and duties for the people who had settled there. Essentially, the settlers, who were mainly of European descent, were destined to occupy and civilize the lands from one coast to the other. This philosophy justified the political actions that took away the Native Americans' rights and also led to the Mexican-American War. The history of art is replete with instances of political statements and political propaganda, as we have seen. In ancient Rome, the Emperor Augustus not only presented himself as a very young and fit in his portrait, but also promoted his political agenda through public monuments such as Arapassus. This altar, dedicated to the goddess of peace, is adorned with messages about the peace and prosperity Augustus was bringing to the citizens through his many virtues and achievements, including his conquest of foreign lands, association with the Roman deities, role of chief priest, promotion of the family as the cornerstone of the empire, wisdom of the imperial senatorial rule, and alleged ancestry leading back to the legendary founding of Rome by Romulus and Remus. John Singleton Copley created a portrait of Mrs. Ezekiel Goldthwaite that conveys her wealth and status through clothing and setting. At the same time, by having her reach for the fruit on the table, he alludes to her other accomplishments, including being the mother of 13 children, a gifted gardener, and a wealthy landowner with orchards in colonial Boston. Unification and Exclusion Art and architecture can be used as means of bringing together a group of people with like beliefs or views and emphasizing what they have in common. In demonstrating how they are alike, such objects and places can also indicate how others are different, which can lead to the exclusion of those who hold different beliefs or views. The events that have been agreed upon as having occurred and their relative importance are key to the understanding of the Dome of the Rock, or Kubat, in Jerusalem. Its site, origins, and various past and present 
uses are all factors in the shrine's meaning and significance to the people of different backgrounds and faiths for whom it is a holy place. The Dome of the Rock was completed in 691 as a shrine for Muslim pilgrims uh, by the Umayyad Caliph, or political and religious leader, Abd al-Malik. The sacred rock upon which the shrine is built marks the site where Muhammad ascended to heaven on a winged horse. Part of the Temple Mount, or Mount Zion, the rock is said to have a great importance before Muhammad, as well as by those of the Jewish, Roman, and Christian faiths. It is the site where Abraham prepared to sacrifice his son Isaac, according to the Hebrew Bible. Solomon's temple, also known as the first temple, was later erected there. Herod's temple, completed during the reign of the Persian king Darius I, around 516 BC, and next built, and it was destroyed in 70 under the Roman Empire Emperor Titus, who had a temple to the god Jupiter built on the site. And we will stop right here with our first part of the lecture. We'll come to part two. Winslow Homer. Homer began painting Civil War subjects in 1862. He showed a number of these paintings to critical and popular acclaim in the annual exhibitions of the National Academy of Design in New York between 1863 and 1866. One of the last Civil War paintings he created was The Veteran in a New Field. He started it shortly after the war ended and President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, both events occurring in April 1865. Homer depicts a soldier has returned to his farm. Having cast aside his Union jacket, the soldier farmer has taken up his scythe and with broad horizontal sweeps harvests a bountiful crop. This quiet scene is a reminder of the never-ending process of life, death, and rebirth. Homer captures the sense of anxious relief, deep sorrow, and tentative hope individuals and nation alike were expressing at that time of transition. Communication. Part of the Minoan civilization, this deity is believed to be a fertility symbol also known as a mother goddess, a religious symbol that appears from prehistoric eras until the Roman Empire. The snake held in each of the figure's upraised hands is associated with fertility and symbolizes the renewal of life due to the fact that it periodically sheds its skin. The object tells us about the type of culture from which it is derived, articulating their beliefs, traditions, and customs. For the Minoans, there is no need to explain or interpret this image because it was easily understood by the community. A more modern use of communicating through symbols and art can be found among the Ashanti people of Ghana, West Africa, and the Kente cloth woven by them and others in the region, including the Yu people. Using silk and cotton, the cloth is woven on specially designed looms in four-inch strips that are then sewn together. Kente cloth was traditionally worn by kings during special ceremonies. The patterns and symbols woven into the cloth conveyed highly individualized messages that could not be reproduced by the weavers for any other individuals. Colors conveyed mood, with darker shades associated with grieving, and lighter shades with happiness. Although the cloth was originally for political leaders, the design was not meant to convey a political message. It represented the culture's spiritual beliefs in symbols and colors. Protest and shock. Art also connects to our lives as a means of expressing protest, as can be seen in the work of Jean Quick to See Smith, a Native American who often sarcastically comments on the history of the treatment of her peoples by Americans in general and by the United States government in particular. The impetus for these two works was the 1992 celebration of the 500th anniversary 
of Columbus's discovery of the New World. Ron Muk is an Australian, and he's made a point by repeatedly challenging the viewer with questions about life and relationships. In his hyper-realistic sculpture, Mask 2, he often creates works of the human form that are exceptionally out of scale, unexpectedly undressed, or placed in unusual postures, therefore creating many surprises among gallery goers, especially those who approach these uncanny works at a close distance. Celebration and commemoration. The use of art to note the observance of particular life events for ordinary people, rulers, and officials of all sorts has been a frequent theme and appears in all eras of the myriad styles. The presentation of such event can be effectively call attention to a distinctive new approach as artists takes, such is the case for a painting in celebration of a wedding created by Henri Rousseau, a mostly self-taught artist. His style was embraced by many avant-garde artists at the time. However, as boldly moving away from his traditional methods and ideas taught in art schools at the time. Worship. Perhaps the most frequent use of art as a means of connecting the viewer's lives through the ages has been for religious purposes, often entailing the aspects of worship whereby a deity, person, or narrative is presented for the viewer to use in order to express their devotion as an occasion of worship or to contemplate its meaning. Cult statues, images of deities, saints, or revered figures such as Varaha, the boar-headed avatar or physical form of the Hindu god Vishnu. Here, Vahara is rescuing the goddess Budeva by slaying the demon that had trapped her in the ocean. Dangling in midair as she holds his tusk, Varaha returned Budiva to her rightful place on earth. Worship. Other examples include the enormous altarpieces that were central focus in churches during the Middle Ages, Renaissance, and Baroque eras in Europe. Altarpieces such as El Trasbenteri in the Cathedral of Toledo, Spain. Its elaborate carvings and gilding interplay with natural sunlight that streams in from strategically paced openings in the wall and ceiling. Such works are designed to be awe-inspiring, presenting the viewer-believer with a spectacular visual expression of mysteries of the faith. Information, Education, and Inspiration Art has often been used as a means to inform, to educate, and to inspire. And the religious works that we have viewed have been traditionally used for these purposes. In addition to those, we need to consider the many forms uh, that have been used to provide information for secular or non-religious purposes, as well as those that have emerged more recently. We know the Egyptians created a form of paper made from flexible papyrus stems that ro they rolled into scrolls. The Egyptians developed their system of writing in hieroglyphics, abstracted pictures that represent words or sounds uh, around 3400 BC. Literacy and writing was restricted among the Egyptians to highly educated scribes. By around the first century BC, the Romans had formalized a system of tiered education that is progressing through grades based on age and development of skills, although former schooling was generally reserved for those who could afford. While the ancient Chinese used paper and printing methods from as early as the first century, these did not appear in the Western world for centuries afterward. The invention of the printing press and movable type by Gutenberg in Germany in 1439 was truly momentous, as both written and pictorial forms could then be replicated and dispersed wildly.
the advent of photography, beginning in the 1830s, considerably broadened the potential dissemination of information. Photography's use in printed matter developed and is notable for the journalistic approach and documentary features it brought to newspapers and magazines in the early 20th century that continue to this day. The graphic arts presented new means and new arena for artists and also for the spread of information. Of course, at the same time, the potential for manipulation of these means resulted in the spread of a great wealth of material of dubious accuracy and purpose. Misinformation is spread as easily as information, so the need to critically evaluate the material and ideas you gather is increasingly important if you seek truth from art. That is the end of our chapter, and here are some uh, key terms for you to, um, to definitely study um, as you uh, work on this chapter. Thank you.